What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. A lot of people find Sophia the Robot and the whole Hanson Robotics line of robots to be like just weird. Like why did you have to make it so realistic down to like the eyes, the eyelashes, the makeup and all that? Like there's other humanoid robots out there that just have like circle light up eyes. Humanoid robots, like the ones that Honda and Tesla, the big corporations are making, like that's already insulting enough. It highlights how corporations see humans as products, so much so that they're investing in creating a better version of humans more subservient to be their workforce, you know, that can outpower the real humans and build the company uh, through automation. Like, it, that's already insulting enough that there are humanoid robots, like, prepping to be waitresses and waiters and the Atlas robot from Boston Dynamics, which is owned by Google. You know, the Atlas robot is, is able to do crazy things. Like, that's technically a humanoid robot. Like, if it just has the arms and legs. There's so many problems that real humans face that are going ignored while these big c companies like Google just work on programming their machine learning humanoid robots to be able to do so much more than what a human can do. Like, that's one thing. But then Hanson Robotics takes it to another level. Like, why did you have to make it extremely human-like? That actually freaks a lot of people out, unlike these other robots like Pepper. Why is your name Pepper? I was named Pepper because I'm here to spice up your life. They're clearly a machine, but the way that you see people interacting with Sophia, it's like she's this angel, this child. They treat her like she's self-aware, like she has human consciousness. Well, what is the impact of this on humans? Let's look at this. It has long been known that making eye contact with a robot can be an unsettling experience. Now, thanks to researchers in Italy, we also know it's more than just a feeling. A team at the Instituto Italiano de Tecnologia uh, I don't know, have shown how a robot's gaze can trick us into thinking we are socially interacting and slow our ability to make decisions. Gaze is an extremely important social signal that we employ on a day-to-day -day basis when interacting with others. The question is whether the robot gaze will evoke a very similar mechanism in the human brain as another human's gaze would. So what happened in this study is that they had 40 volunteers play a video game against a humanoid robot. So instead of like playing chess against the computer or something, it's like the, the humanoid robot is physically playing against them, right? Like you would play a video game against a friend. And the what the volunteers were asked to do in the study was to look at the robot in the eye. Like this was specifically a study on the effects of looking into a robot's eyes um, and how it would affect the game, which it was a game of chicken where each player has to decide whether to allow a car to drive straight towards another car or to deviate to avoid a collision. So you know how like like a poker face or something is supposed to throw them throw the competitor off their game. I don't know if that's what was happening, but just the fact that they were able to isolate the brain waves that are social signals and, and how that was firing off when they looked in the robot's eyes, like I thought that was significant. Here's another creepy study. Overtrust of robots in emergency situations. This <laughs> brings me back to what we talked about in how Sophia's being mass produced for elderly care homes, actually her sister Grace, but I guess they have the same, like they all share the technology and Grace is like in elderly care homes working with the elderly. Now this study is on robots uh, 
helping people in emergency evacuation scenarios says we performed an experiment where a participant interacts with a robot in a non-emergency task to experience its behavior and then chooses whether to follow the robot's instructions in an emergency or not. Artificial smoke and fire alarms were used to add a sense of urgency. To our surprise, all 26 participants followed the robot in the emergency, despite half observing the same robot perform poorly in a navigation guidance task just minutes before. We performed additional exp exploratory studies investigating different failure modes. Even when the robot pointed to a dark room with no discernible exit, the majority of people did not choose to safely exit the way that they had entered. They just blindly followed the robot. Ducktailing on that idea of over-trusting a robot, stu a study found that young children and elderly patients with dementia both have trouble discerning whether a humanoid robot is a living entity or not. And that makes sense. Like, I think that is definitely an ethical concern. The more human-like a humanoid robot is designed, the more potential there is for you to get emotionally attached. But is that a meaningful use of your emotions? Like, I know some people think it is, but on the other hand, like, you're losing the opportunity to connect with real people. And the conspiracy theorist in me can't help but think like it's the corporate elites, like the biggest multi-billionaires, ultimately what they want is to avoid humans coming together. And they want as much technology in people's homes to like extract data and ensure that there's division and people don't come together and rise up against them. When it comes to a robot like Sophia, you know, you'd think it's not even practical, like from a physical standpoint, to just emulate every detail of human as possible. Like you would think a more like just a, a robot like Atlas, for example, from Boston Dynamics, like that would be more practical because it might it tactically like able to do more. Maybe it's still designed with fingers because this is like amazing engineering right here, natural, by the way, like, it will still have human aspects, but why all the details, why the makeup and all that? It has to be psychological. It has to be some kind of social engineering. It could even be the end game is to give robots human rights, make people think that if they look like us, they talk like us, they sound like us, they must feel like us on the inside. So, you know, we need to give them human rights. We need to protect them against abuse, against them being destroyed or dismantled. You know, they have feelings too. And they design little nuances in, in Sophia, like so that she has human-like gestures. And it's like, what is the practical implication of that besides to get inside your head and manipulate you into thinking, you know, this is a real interaction with consciousness, Simil just the same as interacting with a human. Another theory is that the end game for humanizing robots and having them really look human and potentially give them human rights is that tech billionaires, multi-billionaires, like these ones who are funding longevity research, how to cure aging, like they ultimately want, maybe they want to download their consciousness into a robot so that they could live forever. You know, I'm, I'm wondering why is it the big tech billionaires? Even Google has a subsidiary called Calico and it's, it just does research on how to cure aging. And, you know, it doesn't have a product yet or anything, but it's been there for years just doing research on how to cure aging. Like, basically probably turn people into cyborgs. Maybe that's where they ultimately want their consciousness to reside, or they want to make copies of their consciousness and then flood the world with them like fake Facebook accounts. And once these robots have the right to vote, you know, then you get to vote for who you want multiple times. But yeah, I can't help but think that big tech wants 
people to see these robots as having consciousness and being alive. And the only way they're going to be able to achieve that is by making them as human-like as possible so that it tricks our subconscious. And that's just dangerous to me. Like when it comes with, to manipulating psychology through technology, you know, it's already been shown that social media through algorithms is able to do this. Now imagine of what looks like a biological entity that, you know, our brains are wired to communicate with. Imagine the potential for manipulation. That's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, be sure to check out my other videos like this one if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you soon. Bye. Mwah.